Hello, this is Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use a statistical program that can help you with data analysis. The program is called SPSS, or Statistical Program for Social Sciences. Before we get started, let me just say SPSS is robust. This is a very big program that can do a lot of amazing different types of data analysis, specifically with quantitative data analysis, when you have numbers, you know, surveys, or, or a quantitative content analysis, that sort of thing. You don't always need to use or to go to SPSS. It's like if you're gonna go to the grocery store, are you gonna take an airplane, a high-speed train, or a bicycle? Well, if it's just down the road, it's something that's a quick trip, you only need a few things, maybe you just take your bicycle, right? And the same thing is the approach that you would have with data analysis. You don't always need to use SPSS, but I don't want you to be afraid of SPSS. And so that's why I wanna show it to you today. So SPSS as a program has three different file types. The first type of file that you have is the data file itself. That's where all of your data is. The second type of file is where you have a, a log of what you did, but also the output, the results of the different analysis that you've run. And then the third type of file is not always used by scholars. In fact, I only started using the third type of file a few years ago, and that's called the syntax file. And in the syntax file, what you're really doing is uh, keeping breadcrumbs um, directions for yourself so that if you ever wanna do the exact same procedures again, you can just boom, click a button, and it'll apply everything and run it all for you so you don't have to go through step by step by step by step to achieve it. What we're looking at right now is an empty file for your data. It is the data um, file, the SAV file. When you look at it empty, there, there's, it could, you know, it's hard to see how SPSS works in here. Um, we do have a data view down here. So this means that this is where all of the people's, let's say it's a survey, all of the people's responses would be. And then we do have a variable view, which is also empty because this is an empty file. And this is where we would have sort of like the secret decoder ring to tell us what the different number codes that we saw in the data view might mean. But when you look at an empty data file, it is very difficult to think of how you can use it. So let's go ahead and look at an actual data file. So this is an actual data file of a survey that I conducted some time ago. And you can see again down here, I have a variable view and a data view. So I wanna start on the data view. So I click on data view. The data view literally shows me every single person's response with the, per with the people being on the row across the data file. You know, so this is, you know, person number 15 right here. Here's the 24th person in my list right here, etc. And so if I kind of scroll down, I can see, wow, this is a pretty big file. Had a lot of people on here. It looks like I had 579 people in this particular file. So then uh, when I scroll across, this is where I actually get a chance to see what the different variables or questions that I had on my survey might have looked like. Uh, today I'm going to have us really focus on a scale that measures one's sense of belonging. And so in this particular um, file, it's going to be called DIBS for Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging Scale. And I can see my dibs items. There were seven dibs items right here. And so again, this is the data view. And so the first question on the dibs questionnaire is down, is down this column for dibs one. And if I'm interested to know what person number one said on question dibs one, I can see that the person gave it a five. 
I can see that this that the next person in line, who is person number two, gave dibs one a four. Now look at this person. This person gave dibs dibs one a one. So this shows us the variation just by eyeballing it between how much belonging people felt with regard to uh, answering this particular question. Um, I can hover over a question and it will tell me what the question was. I could see this one said dibs one. That tells me what the name of the variable was. The label says, I feel like I belong in QAnon. Um, so some people maybe feel like they very much belong in QAnon. And then some people maybe feel like they don't belong in QAnon at all. But how do you know the difference between a five and a one and what a five meant and what a one meant on the survey? Well, that's when we go over into the variable view. The variable view is a lot like a secret decoder ring. The variable view is gonna tell me, what did a one mean? When somebody said one, what did they actually think they were saying? What did a two mean? What did a three mean? And so on and so forth. So as I click on variable view, and I scroll down to find my dibs items, I can see here I am, dibs one, I feel like I belong in QAnon, and if I click over on values, in values, I all of a sudden get these little three dots, a box with three dots. If I click on that, I can see that when someone said one, they would strongly disagree. So for the person who said, um, I, the very first person gave it a five, if you can remember that. So the question was, I feel like I belong in QAnon. And someone said, I strongly agree. But then if you remember, most of the answers to that question were actually a one. And so when those people were asked, I feel like I belong in QAnon, most people said strongly disagree. So we set up our surveys basically using this information that we put in the variable view so that people don't have to talk in terms of numbers. So they don't have to say one or a five or a four or a three. They can say, oh, I strongly disagree with that statement or mm, I somewhat agree with that statement so that people can speak and provide you answers in a way that makes sense to them, but we still have the opportunity to do data analysis with that information. Because you can't really do data analysis unless you can, can you know, read the data and look for trends. And so the way that we do that is we turn that uh, information into actual numbers. And this is where we do it. The values over here on the variable view side will represent what you're gonna see on the data view, but also match up with what was on the survey itself. Let me look at a different question here. A question uh, like, let's say, gender. So here's the gender question. So the gender question in variable view um, is if somebody um, said that they were a male on the survey, then over in the data view side, we're gonna see a one. If somebody said they were a female when they filled out the survey, then over on the data view side, we're gonna see a two. If somebody said they were transgender on the survey, over on the data view side, we're gonna see a three. So this really tells us what the numbers are when I skip on over to gender in the data view side, it tells me what these one, twos and threes, et cetera, mean. So now I can actually run results to see, is there a difference in how much sense of belonging someone feels based on their gender. So this 
is all an SAV file. So you can see it starts up here, SAV, right? So this is the data file. The data file, the SAV file, has two different sides. The data view, and this is where all of your data is for all of your people or cases, whatever it may be. And then the variable view, which actually tells you how the variable is set up and, and what the numbers on the other side mean. And so this is the SAV file. Anytime I do something, in uh, SPSS here, I'll just go ahead and do a very uh, quick procedure. I'll do um, gender and I'll see how many uh, of each type of people we had in gender. Now when I, when I start to run my results, I'm going to get a new file that pops up. See how that popped up? I didn't tell it to, but it came up and it is now providing me an outline of what the gender breakdown was. And remember the one equal to male, the two equal to female, um, there was probably three which was transgender, four equals non-binary, five was prefer not to say, and then some people, 22 people, didn't wanna tell us. And they also didn't wanna say, I don't wanna say, they just skipped it, and that's fine. So I have this second type of file that popped up, and this is the output file. So this output file, this shows your results. And this is a, an SPV file. Um, so this ends in SPV. Now you can double click within this and bring up an editor, and then you can do things like, oh, I wanna know of uh, the people who actually gave me some sort of a gender, I'm going to make it a, a bold and I'm going to like highlight um, this area and then I can just press the little X and now all of a sudden I can very clearly see the percentages for each group. So then I would save this output file and I've now worked in two different files. I've worked in the data file, which was the SAV file, and then I have created an output file, an SPV file. The last kind of file is an SPS file, and this is syntax. And so if I, I don't have the, the proper syntax open that goes along with this um, uh, case that I'm working with, this file I'm working with, but essentially I would be able to highlight the syntax and then press the play button and then it would do whatever this list of instructions that have been coded in tell it to do. So this is a little bit more advanced and, and takes probably some different videos to show you on this, but know that SPSS has three different file types most likely you're gonna be working with a data file, which is an SAV, an output file, which is an SPV. And then within that data file, you're gonna have two views, the data view, where all of your different people are, people are by lines, or cases are by lines, and then the column represents each individual variable. And then in variable view, you get to understand what it is that those numbers on the other side mean. And so this was your quick little SPSS 101, and I hope you have a wonderful time researching.